Jacks. Welcome back once again to Jacks Tech Corner and another video on Photoshop Elements. Today, like the title always gives it away, today we are doing selective editing and we're going to be using the clipping mask uh, to help us. Okay, so we'll make it very, very easy to do this by setting up different sections of the picture to allow you to adjust different parts of the picture instead of the overall. We're going to look at that. So let's go ahead and get started right away with this. So if we took this photograph here, and you can see the skies are like really, really bright. The water is kind of dull and the trees are just not that green. So I want to make this photograph pop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I could go up here and I could just click here and say brightness and contrast. All right. And we could just up the brightness. Watch what happens. It ups the brightness of the whole entire photograph. See that? Everything's everything's up there and we don't want to do that, okay? If we do the contrast, same deal. The whole entire picture gets uh, the same exact uh, setting. So we don't want to do that because this is selective editing. And not only that, it's also uh, talking about the clipping mask, all right? So let me go ahead. I'm going to delete this first. So let me delete this layer out of here. We don't need that right now. We're going to take our background image and we're going to duplicate it using Control or Command J. Now, Control J is on a PC. Command J would be on a Mac. So depending on what computer you have. But Photoshop Elements is going to react just the same. You're not going to have a problem with it. I always shut that background layer off so I don't have to worry about that one. What we're going to do first is make a selection of the sky. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to try to use the magic wand tool and see how that works out for me. I click on it. And it's not too shabby, uh, but we're going to add some stuff here to it. So I'll go down and I'll click on the brush tool. And we're just going to add the rest of the sky in because we want all the sky to be added in. And uh, I'll go right along these trees. Again, you're going to do a lot better selection of what I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing this strictly for the purpose of a training video to show you how we would do selective editing. All right, we're going to get right around here, around these trees, back up, so I can get all the sky. And you can use any of the selection tools you wish to use. I'm just uh, using it here to create a fast selection. And uh, you can even make this brush a little bigger using your left and right bracket keys just to make this very simple all right so once you get your selection made and again that's the sky it looks pretty good use your command or control J and we're gonna basically take and only have that on our layer so if I shut this off you'll see that that's all I have on my layer all right now as you can see it, it could be a lot better selection but that's okay we can address that later on now, if you take this layer two and you say, okay, well, we want to change the brightness and contrast because what I want to do is lower the brightness down of that sky. But look what's happening is, again, it's affecting the whole entire photograph. We don't want that to happen. Let's go back here, close this out. Click on the gray brightness control, the gray brightness control. Click on that with your left mouse button, right click and say, hey, let's create a clipping mask. See it? Create a clipping mask. We're going to do that. Now, when you double click on the little gray box, it's going to give you the controls again. Now, watch what happens. Now, you can see that we're only affecting the sky. Because what we did was, I'll show you this. We're going to affect it right to about, uh, just leave it there. I'll make it a little bit underexposed just so you get the idea. So what this does is it creates a clipping mask and it clips it to the layer right below it. That's what we did. We clipped it to the layer below it. Now to clean this up in here, what I use is a tool that I use a lot is the spot healing tool. And I'm going to make this brush just a little bigger using my right bracket key. Now it's going to say, oh, to do this, you got to flatten the image. Well, that's all right. Let's go ahead and flatten the image out. Uh, discard the hidden layer. Sure. Okay. Now we got it flattened out. Now we can go through here and you can clean this up and get all this taken out of here. OK. 
Okay. Right across there. And this is just a nice way to clean this up. Oh, I didn't want to do that. There's a house actually sitting up there, i seen, on top of this hill. I don't want to lose the house. I think it's a pretty neat part of the picture. So I'm just going across here, right over the trees, and I'm just blending this together, these corners. That way, even though our selection was not eh, the greatest, we can still fix it up pretty nice. It's not that big of a deal to fix things up. All right. So we got that fixed up. The next thing we're going to do here is we are going to duplicate that original picture again. Control J. Turn the background off. And this time that was brightness control. But this time I want to show you you can also use it for color and saturation. So now we're going to select this tree line here. Okay, let's go ahead and make another selection. Again, if I'm going a little fast, it's okay. Just stop it, pause the video, and rewind it. And you can slide the YouTube video back and forth. That's what makes these videos so nice to have. Um, we're going to do the magic wand tool again. I'm going to click on the trees. You can see here it needs a little work. So then I'll go down, click on my brush, and we have add selected. And all I'm going to do here is make this brush a little smaller and add some of these areas in here. Okay. And what I mean by adding is all you got to do is go over these little dots. These dots, some people call these marching ants. You can call them whatever you want, but these are signifying that these areas are not selected. So it's very easy to tell what needs to be selected by just painting over with your selection brush all the dots. And we can get those taken care of. Right? See, again, it's very easy to do this. And this and this will work on any picture, any photograph. You can make a selection and you can uh, do selective editing. So today I want to teach you selective editing and the, the uh, clipping mask. I think it's very important to learn these. These are a lot of tools that a lot of people that use Photoshop Elements never use. They, I think just because you don't know they're there, they're kind of hidden. And if you've never used them before, it kind of makes sense. Okay, so everything looks really good selected. Again, I'm going to hit Command or Control J. And now if we look, watch. All we have is the tree line. That's what we're working with. So let's turn this back on. Go up here to the top to where it says create a new fill or adjustment layer. And this time we're going to use hue and saturation. Remember, click us off. Click again on the gray box, not the white box, because this is going to give you different... Uh, and a lot of people in my videos go, well, wait a minute, Jack. Uh, I right-clicked on it, and I don't see what you see. But you have to make sure you click on the gray box, okay? That's the adjustment box. Right-click and go to Create a Clipping Mask. Boom. Double-click. Now what we're going to do is just up the saturation of these trees a little bit. You'll see they are getting a lot more greener. Okay. We can change the hue a little bit. So you can play around with this and get these trees looking however you want them to look. And again, folks, this is totally up to you. Please don't put in the comments, oh, Jack, those trees didn't look real. That looks stupid. This is just me. This is how I want it to be. We don't want it that bright. So we'll turn the brightness down just a little bit. And there we go. Now, if I click over here, it's going to say, hey, you must flatten these images before proceeding. Do you want to flatten them? And flattening the images, I get a lot of people to say, look, I did all that work and I saved it and I can't print it. I, I can't send it to my developer because the, the developer does not understand PSD files. Okay, and that's what this is, a Photoshop file. So you want to click OK, discard the hidden layer again. That's just that background we saved just as protection. So, yeah, we can discard that. And there you go. Now your photo is edited up and it looks beautiful. It looks a lot better than what we started with. And I also get a lot of people saying, Jack, well, you know, I like to get it perfect in camera. And everybody does. That's a wonderful thing to get it perfect in camera. But sometimes we come home, we throw it up on the computer, and we're like, it doesn't look exactly the way we remembered it. So we want to clean it up or make it look even more presentable. When you're done, go to File, go to Save As. Now this is the trick. Okay, this is the big trick everybody messes up on. This happens to be a JPEG picture, so it's okay. But a lot of times, it'll come up and it'll say this. .psd. That's a Photoshop development file. You can't 
upload this to like um, you know any of the uh, photo sites out there to get it developed because it has to be a JPEG. So just go down here, JPEG, or there's there's other ones too, not only JPEG. Uh, I think they'll print BMP, which is not the greatest format. Uh, TIFFs are, are the best uh, for saving as because it saves all of your information. JPEGs are going to compress it down a little bit, but that's okay. So we're going to call this uh, Waterway. And we're just going to save this. So click Save. When this box comes up, save it. If you're going to get this printed, save a large file. Large file to print it is 6 megabytes. If you're putting it on the internet, usually five meg five quality would work. It's one megabyte, so it's smaller, so it loads faster. But we're going to print this out, so we're going to say six. We're going to say OK, and there it is, and it's saved. So, folks, I hope this video helped. I get so many emails saying, how can I edit certain parts of the picture without destroying the other parts? And this is exactly how you do it. Again, this is selective editing using... A clipping mask okay selective editing using a clipping mask well thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed to these videos please click on the subscribe button follow along with me and I'll be bringing you more Photoshop elements tutorial videos thank you so much and if you have any ideas for future videos please put those in the comments and I'll be sure to put those together for you until next time keep those editors editing and keep those shutters clicking and you too will be one day a professional photographer take care i'll see you next time bye bye for now